Hello, welcome to my tech fan. This is Kiddy Plus 4 CD printer and according to specifications it is prepared for many technical filaments too. Uh, the reason why these three filaments are here, these are PPS CF, because they are waiting for a review of this printer, because they require some higher temperatures far above 300 degrees Celsius. And this video is sponsored by Polymaker, who started supporting all my research work. Now back to the video. This is fast Core X5 enclosed with the printer. Build volume is 305 mm in X and Y direction and 280 along the Z axis. And it will be compatible with Kiddy multicolor box. Now it used 9 mm 1.5 GT bells versus uh, GT2, which is the most popular one. And according to Kiddy, this will reduce the VFAs. I'm not really sure if it will reduce or maybe they will be on different speeds, but uh, I will check this too. It uses 80 watt heater, which can heat up the nozzle up to 370 degrees Celsius. It has bimetal hot end and a nozzle, this means uh, it can print with some abrasive materials like carbon fibers. And the bed can be heated up to 120 degrees Celsius and the chamber up to 65 degrees Celsius. And the maximum speed is 600 mm per second. Now there is a known issue about this uh, chamber heater, actually it is the SSR control board. The, it overheats in a 110 volt area in US, for example, and uh, the kitty knows about this problem and uh, of course they are fixed in the future units, but they also offer a solution for this. I will not cover this detail, I will just place a link down in the description. So uh, if you are in the US and you have some older one, please check this because uh, it may overheat if you are using that chamber heater. It runs on Clipper, it has built-in camera. And uh, this will not be detailed review video because uh, this is quite old printer now exists on the market maybe four or five months. Uh, instead, I want to see how it prints from PLA up to maybe some high temperature technical materials. Because even for example, PET CF, some of them requires the temperature between 300 and 320 degrees Celsius. And uh, so far I tested it on the X1 Carbon with a maximum temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. And I'm curious if it can benefit from these higher temperatures if you print it for example at 320 degrees Celsius. It's time for the unboxing and I could uh, take it out from the box by holding this uh, packaging foil. It's really good protected during the shipping. Oh, and there are some additional boxes in the box. Spool holder power cable, screen. Some tools, uh, glue stick and <laughs> sample filament. Come on, kitty, are you serious? Mounting the handle with two screws from the inside. Two-sided texture PI sheet. Well, actually, after attaching the display, I could even turn it on because all these instructions we have on the screen too. Flash cutters are not included. This is my own. Let's continue with removing some zip ties and some protection cardboard. Connecting the screen cable and installing the screen. Locked by pushing to the right. Installing the spool holder, which is not on the back side, but above the printer finally. A few times I forgot to remove the protection foil from the cameras and the image is blurred. Okay. It can be assembled in less than 15 minutes. Now let's take a closer look. This is the maximum opening angle for the door. The printer has nice limiters on the back side, so it is very easy to place it in the same position. On the left side we have the chamber heater. On the right side is the AUX fan. From inside it has nice thermal insulation. We have the metallic rods on all three axes and this is the extruder, I believe that this is the cutter. Nice view to the nozzle, that's the sensor. And this is the timing belt with the pitch of 1.5 mm instead of typical 2. This is the opening for the purge material, nozzle cleaner and this is the exhaust fan with some kind of filter inside. And then we have these handles on two sides. Extremely useful if you want to move it anywhere. As you can see the spool holder is on the top now and not on the back side. This is the back side of the printer and this is the exhaust fan. And unfortunately I cannot see any holes. It will be very hard to attach some adapter for the exhaust pipe. This is the opening for the purge material. And we cannot just place any kind of box here because we can close these ventilation holes. We need some kind of distance here. Ah, we have the plug for the network cable. On the right side we have the power cable and the main switch and this is improvement compared to the Kiddy X Max 3 because uh, there it was here somewhere on the back side and it was really hard to access to it. And we have the USB plug on the top of the printer and I already mentioned there is a camera. Angle of the screen is not adjustable. Oh. 
there are two more things I want to mention. My printer didn't arrive with a ceramic nozzle and uh, Kitty told me that uh, new units are shipped with ceramic nozzle and now we also get one. Well, it arrived in the meantime, but all my printings are finished for this video, so I will replace it later. Let me show you. So here we can see the ceramic heat break. It prevents better the heat to go up in the cold zone and with this it reduces the chance of the heat creep. This is especially important with the PLA because we want this filament to be solid in the cold zone. The other thing is many users claim that they have a loose sliding bearing here on the bottom back side. And also I checked mine and it is far better than those which I saw in the videos. Now things may change by time because I can see some kind of glue is used to fix that sliding bearing and by time that glue may become soft because of the heat. So probably in the future I have to find out some better solution for this. In the meantime I saw one solution by Noziborks. I will place a link to his video down in the description. Let's turn it on. Oh, it has nice bright LED lights. Mm -hmm. 200, okay. It's up very fast and I hope this sample filament will be enough for the Venchi. There is it on the other side, but tweezers are not included neither. I'm not sure, can I start the printing? I can see the bench, but probably I have to do the calibration first. Oh, he still uses the paper calibration method. Hmm. After the firmware update, this part became optional. What I have to level the bed manually to are in error of industries. Wow. After firmware update, things are changed and I will talk about it soon. <laughs> On the NS3 it was easier because those wheels were bigger. These are extremely small and very uncomfortable to rotate them. Just to clear something now, later I mention it again. I checked a few videos and I was surprised why nobody mentioned this manual leveling. And actually the reason for this, after the first update, it was completely moved. Let me show you. So this manual leveling is not anymore part of the auto bed leveling, but it is moved here, platform reset, and it is an optional setting, so it will not confuse those beginner users anymore. The only confusing thing may be that uh, if somebody follow these steps, uh, he don't know that after the platform reset, he should repeat the auto leveling and input shaping. And this info should be written here somewhere. The next step is auto leveling and even if I didn't do this manual leveling correctly, this will create some metrics and it will compensate it during the printing. Here it asks for the bed temperature for the auto leveling. It is very important for the inductive sensor. I'm not 100% sure when it used the inductive sensor and when the load cell. According to the Kiddy dancer which I got, inductive sensors I use for both automatic leveling and homing and the piezoelectric sensors, which is the load cell, are used to determine the Z offset value. But basically in that case we don't need that paper friction method at all. Input shaping. Tip cover vibrations. Well, let's start with that bench finally. It's doing the leveling only on the printing area, which is good. This will be a fast benchy, but also loud during the printing because the doors are opened. Nice progress and I really appreciate this nice view to the nozzle, which is also very bright thanks to these LED lights. Printing is finished a few seconds ago. 20 minutes together with the heating. Bed adhesion check. Oh, okay. It's good until it's hot. Nice bench, a little bit matte surface and the uh, seam lines is visible on this uh, chimney. And here too. I just copied the update files to this USB drive and it is doing the update now and uh, it will take some time. The update is finished. Let's try to connect the network. Connected to the internet but only to 2.4 GHz network, but also it works on the cable. 
Since I did a firmware update and I'm not sure from the calibration what is recorded, I will repeat the complete calibration but off camera and interesting I noticed that this menu is now different. Red leveling 60 degrees Celsius. And after the firmware update there is no need for the paper friction calibration method. Auto leveling completed. Input shaping. Calibration is completely finished and this time there is no need for the paper friction method or manual bed leveling. After calibration I want to have one more printing which is prepared by the manufacturer Fidget Toy. <laughs> this rubber corners was in the box part of the packaging. Printing is finished and I thought I will test the filament runout sensor but it was enough. Switching to the Sunno PL Plus 2.0 and I will prepare the slicer now. This is Kiddy Studio which is extremely similar to the Bamboo Studio and this cute dog will be the first object which I will prepare, enabling the slicer and starting the printing over the network. That was the end of the first layer. <laughs> the whole desk is shaking. It's a pity that for the peel I have to open these doors because it will be much quieter. From half meter distance the noise is approximately 60 decibels. Cute. Mm, really nice printing, no complaints here. But sometimes these three supports are interesting too. It's time for the bed leveling test, which will cover almost the whole surface. It's doing the outer leveling on the print surface, which will be almost the whole bed surface. The start is very good. Actually this is not bad, only here it messed up where I have these uh, fingerprints. Definitely don't forget to clear your PI sheet before every printing. Not perfect but completely acceptable, if this would have a second layer it would be completely covered. Thanks to those uh, new belts with the smaller pitch, uh, those VFAs are reduced according to the kiddie. Now let's check this, in Orca Slicer we have integrated this test, the speed will be from 50 to 300 with step of 25, here you can see the speed changes. And for this test silk filaments are the best. And I did this test not only with kiddie plus 4, but also with Bamboo Lab A1 which also have 1.5mm pitch belts and with X1 Carbon which has a standard pitch of 2mm. I was analyzing a lot of these test objects and more or less my conclusion is that VFAs are there in all three cases, only at the different speeds. On A1 it was the most dominant at 50mm per second, on plus 4 at 75 and on X1 Carbon at 100mm per second speed. Of course this may vary it from several things, including the angle of the surface, but I tried to compare it here, same properties. It's time to test the print temperatures above 300 degrees Celsius, and I have the review in the progress KIDI PPA based filaments. Most of the test objects are printed on 300 degrees Celsius, but I want to test higher temperatures too. This is glass fiber reinforced PAHT, and I'm printing some test objects for the review video of this filament. The printing is on 320 degrees Celsius. PAHT CF carbon fiber version and also another printing on 320 degrees Celsius. And Ultra PA same test objects, this is some kind of core version of the filament. In one thing the kit is much better than Bamboo Lab and that's the view to the nozzle and the light. And just compare it. I don't really like that uh, it do the homing if I want to replace the filament only. This means I cannot do the replacing of the filament in a, if I have some object on the plate. But there is a small thing which could be improved. For example, both printers finished the printing an hour ago and they both completely cooled down. But here I can still hear some fans inside. But the bamboo lab is completely quiet. This review is about the printer and these printings are really nice. But what is their layer attraction compared to 300 degrees Celsius version? Well for this you have to watch the review video of these filaments. 
It's time to test actively heated chamber. I have a review in the progress. This is Sanlu PC ABS, and according to specification, this requires 90 degrees Celsius inside the enclosure. But I hope this 65 will be enough. The first layer looks good, and this is the second one. But I really enjoy this view to the nozzle, it is fantastic. After only 2 minutes, the temperature inside the chamber is 50 degrees Celsius already, and for the first layer, it is not so important because they are heated by the bed. And looks okay so far, usually this stand starts with the warping if there is some problem or something like that. In the meantime I measured the chamber temperature, it is set to 65 now. There is a sensor and the measure value is 63. So this means interesting, very accurate. I thought the sensor is somewhere here, but where we need it, the temperature is there. This is the last element on 260 degrees Celsius. And uh, I can feel that smell of the ABS, not much, but I will see at the end uh, when I open the door. Maybe the filter works nice currently. It's finished few seconds ago, bell adhesion check. Okay, it's good, I have to wait until it cools down. And um, the smell is not so strong. Okay, that's a good sign. I'm printing rest of the test objects for this uh, review. And I think I have to be careful with the names. This is automatically generated one, I didn't pay attention. And it would be good to have some kind of scroll instead of these two or three lines. The printing is finished and I hope you can see this elephant foot too. And this is my first printing on 100 degrees Celsius. And I'm not sure, maybe it doesn't compensate enough because maybe the homing was done on the lower bed temperature and the printing was on higher temperature. I'm printing a few test objects from the PLA2 just to show you how this should look like and here it will do the job correctly but huge difference in the bed temperature is now 55 degrees Celsius. And I can already see that there is no any kind of elephant foot so this means that the Z of set and homing was done correctly. Quick conclusions for the end. The printer is not perfect but most of those issues I mentioned in this video are solved by now in mass production or with the new units. And as you can see, it is here in my working room where my main printers are located and it replaced uh, my KDX Max 3. I really like the view to the nozzle, possibility on printing with the higher temperatures and the actively heated chamber. And you will see it a lot in my future videos where I'm testing these technical filaments which requires these uh, print settings. Now this one thing is not solved so far when I'm printing on higher bed temperatures because uh, the Z offset is prepared for the PLA and uh, somehow maybe this has to be compensated in the firmware for example if I print on 100 or 110 degrees Celsius on the bed temperature. But maybe I have the solution for this already because uh, I don't really plan to print a PLA with this printer and maybe I can prepare that Z offset for this let's say 80 or 90 degrees Celsius on the bed surface and in that case uh, that Z offset will be correct for these technical materials. I don't know, what is your solution for this? Do you experience this kind of problems and elephant foot? Write me down in the comment section a few lines. Thank you for watching and happy printing!